Coming up on America East on Campus, two turnarounds in men's basketball. At Stony Brook, it began with a big class of new faces a season ago. Now they've jumped to the top of America East. I think we definitely had the pieces coming in, and we were picked fourth, but you know, we, we always knew we could finish first. At Maine, not much was expected this year, but for those on the inside, they knew good times were coming. You know, we thought we had some uh, young guys at the time that you know were guys that we could build our, our, our program around. Those guys have just come up through and uh, have done a wonderful job gaining that experience and applying it. In women's who, Hartford's run to the top of the standings involves one of their best players of all time, Erica Beverly. I'm just going to take all the memories, all the accomplishments, all the the coaching that my coach have given me um, to the next level. And in Best of You, a champion at Vermont, in and out of the pool, all now on America East on campus. We are at the home of the Hawks, Chase Family Arena on the campus of the University of Hartford. It will be the site of the 2010 Men's and Women's Basketball Championships presented by Newman Zone. And we're inside Chase Arena where the Hartford men are at work getting ready for the tournament. We welcome you to America East on campus. I'm your host, Eric Freed. For the first time ever, the Men's and Women's Championships will be combined one weekend under one roof right here at the University of Hartford. It should be a great weekend of wall-to-wall -wall basketball and we are getting closer and closer, just a couple of weeks away from that weekend here at the University of Hartford. So with that in mind, let's get you the very latest news from around men's and women's hoop in America East with our Hoop Notebook. For the first time in program history, the University of Hartford made it into a national poll, debuting at number 25 the week of February 8th. Hartford's win in Burlington helped strengthen their hold on the top spot in America East. The rematch is on February 27th. Vermont's stay in the top 25 was a short one, but after 17 years, just getting that kind of national recognition again was worth the wait. The way that I've put it in perspective is that Vermont hadn't been there in 17 years. We made it. Um, we're out now, but we made it. A year ago, we couldn't have said that. So uh, it's still still something that we've done that we can be proud of. Um, we may or may not get back into it, um, but that's just that's something on the side that's fun to talk about and dream about. But that's not the business that we're in. Um, the business is you know, competing in this conference where anyone can win it. So uh, that's really where our focus is. Hartford's win in Burlington helped strengthen their hold on the top spot in America East. The rematch is on February 27th. While those two teams garner national attention, Boston University quietly moved to the top three in the standings. After going 16-0 in conference play a year ago, it was expected to be a rebuilding year at BU. It's been anything but with a group of young players who are just getting started for the Terry. Binghamton made it to double figures and wins before January was over, and they have a player to put into the conversation for player of the year. Greer Wright is among the conference leaders in scoring and assists. After a midseason lull, Boston University got back on track, sweeping the season series from UNH. The final four games of the conference season will all be at home for the Terriers. They have one non-league game remaining, the Bracket Buster matchup at Delaware, February 20th. The other two Bracket Buster matchups, Vermont will host Fairfield, and UNH will travel to Loyola. It's been an up-and-down ride for the Wildcats in conference play. They closed last season on an upswing heading into the tournament, and that's the hope for this year. Albany and UMBC share the same hopes. The Great Danes have battled injuries and inconsistency all season long. The question is, can they turn things around in time for the tournament? They have to realize that it's okay that we're challenged right now offensively. We've got to take greater pride in our defense and the glass, and we'll be okay. I still think the league is wide open. The problem is we've got to be able to put the ball in the basket to have a chance to win. UMBC knew it would be a rebuilding year. After playing in the title game each of the last two years, Randy Monroe is taking a patient approach. A lot of new faces that are not quitting, which I'm extremely proud of. These young men want to be successful. They're playing hard, they're working hard. Not saying they don't get discouraged when things don't come out on, on our end, which we look at as a, as a win. But as I always tell our guys, everybody wants to win but we have to do the little things first in order to put ourselves in position to win, like rebound, like defending, closing out on shooters. All of those things that are tedious and grinding, but are extremely important in the success of any ball club. Slams it down with the left hand. 
Up next, in the preseason poll, Maine was picked to finish toward the bottom of the standings, but they flipped that prediction upside down from the start of the season. You know, I've been through the ups and downs here, and um, it's, it definitely feels good to, to win. If um, we, we work hard, I realize that just things can be possible.